Hi everyone, Malibu Sean Beatman here again, and well, I'm going to talk about Police Academy. Well, what can I say about Police Academy which haven't been said? Well, just picture stripes, but in Police Academy. Yeah, because it involves a ragtag group of people trying to become cops. We have a slacker. A gun nut, a florist, to name a few of the, the people who are trying to become police officers, and oh, one guy is—I consider him freaking entertaining because every police graduating class of a police academy or Whatever the go boot camp always has that that freaking gun nut because all they think of is when they go through middle going through training is when am I gonna shoot my gun? When am I gonna shoot my gun? Plus, this movie has uh, some who's who in it from the eighties, and also there Steve Gunnberg who later became. And three, three guys, and actually three men and a baby, and then a little girl in the 80s, and Clacoon 1 and 2. Kim Cattrall, who was in Porky's, and then before this film, plus she was in Sex in the City. Bubba Smith, who had to continue on in being in these movies. And this is a nice way to start off a franchise. Then we're going to go on about talking about the sequel. Actually, the, the four, actually the three Gurbring films, see, uh, sequels. Which, let's we'll start off with part two. The first assignment, which it's has some members of the graduating class of from part one going to this precinct and they got ch chosen off to th these different people to be their partners and we got introduced to some <laughs> minor characters plus this is uh, actually a, a part of a small arc for the villain, played by Bobcat Goldthwait, who plays the leader of the th these gang. This gang leader, which he plays this out of control gang leader, and we had to get some add more s people to. Some more of the character death as well. We found that Commander Lassard has a brother who runs the precinct, which some of the graduates went to. Plus, this movie is one of the few highlights of the fr of the franchise outside of Part One. Then we got well. Please count me three back in training, which then some of the cast from part one, who was in part two, returned, and we got interest to some characters who are in part two return, returning to part three, but this time they are actually turned into cops. We have Bobcat Goldthwait returning as Zed, who is going through this, uh, going to back to, going to police academy to become a cop, which I think was hilarious. But the main story in this is they're trying to save their alma mater against my, a former person who 
works at the the academy. And one of the one of the funny moments in this movie is we see the guy who plays Takashi from *The Revenge of the Nerds*, Brian Tochi, uh, making friends with Michael Winslow, who is the who plays this the guy who has his own does the sound effects and so in one scene they were at a couple scenes in this movie. Are <coughs> straight out of a kung fu movie, and this movie slowly turns from a good franchise movie to slowly going to hell, which brings up the final Gutenberg Police Academy film, Police Academy Four, which has these. Citizens who aren't become cops, but they're known as citizens on patrol, which the the, the same the grads are. Uh, well, believe it or not, they I think the S on their report cards are meant fantastic, but somehow having ordinary citizens as police officers. Actually, our citizens on patrol said it's a lame attempt on the neighborhood watch. That's my opinion on it, and believe it or not, this movie right here has David Spade. Yes, that's right. From all those Adam Sandler films, in this film as a young kid. So this is one of the few good Dave Spade works. So that means a lot. So of the first four, I'm gonna give part one a five, part two a four, part three a three and a half, part four a three. And this is Malibu Sean Bateman signing off.